Good day to you all. It's me again, bringing you another episode of Making Stuff in Godot 4.、Uh, today, I wanted to present the progress on my foliage system by using a particle shader. A bit of a disclaimer up front:、uh, it is far from finished. I'm sure it could be optimized some more, but since we're working in alpha, it's probably too soon to worry about optimization anyway.、Uh, I am planning to put it on Dropbox if you want to give it a try, but remember. It may be very short-lived, given how、uh, things change from one alpha iteration to another. It simply may not work、uh, anymore by the time you get to try it out. Okay, so just saying. And by the way, in case you do try it out,、um, it would be a display of good manners if you liked the video and subscribed to the channel. Again, just saying. Anyway, to the point.、Um, here is something that remotely resembles a.、Uh, A patch of grass, and if you grab it and move it around the scene, it follows the shape of the terrain.、Uh, the terrain itself has no collision, by the way. It's all smoke and mirrors.、Um, it's a flat mesh with a vertex shader on it, and you can watch some of my previous videos to see how it was made. Now, for demonstration purposes, I am going to replace my grass mesh with a simple box mesh. I'm going to set its height to something noticeable, like 12. And I'm going to reset all these parameters here on the shader so that we can start from a clean slate. All right,、um, a few ground rules to begin with:、um, the shader is to be used on a GPU particles 3D node inside a process material. The amount setting is kind of obvious; it's how many instances we're going to have. I've got 10,000,、uh, as you can see. Lifetime is how quick you want your particles to respawn. If you set it to a minimum, which is equivalent to 10 milliseconds, they will respawn in almost real time as you move the node around the scene.、Uh, I'm keeping it like this for demonstration, but in an actual game, it will depend on you know how vast your grass field is going to be and how fast your player is moving. Maybe you don't need to refresh the particles so quickly. It's important to set the explosiveness to one and randomness to zero. Otherwise, they will flicker when they refresh.、Uh, let me show you. See what's going on. So if you set explosiveness to maximum with zero randomness, they will be drawn all at once, and、uh, that will help you avoid this issue. Okay, so let's look at some of the、uh, fundamental shader parameters. First, before we do anything, let's make sure we have our height map image in this map height map parameter. This, of course, should be the same image you're using to deform your terrain in the vertex shader, assuming you want your grass to snap onto your terrain, of course. Optionally, you can put in the normal map of your terrain as well, and you'll see what for、uh, in just a moment. Next, instance rows. This is crucial because it controls the emission shape.、Uh, if you set the particle count to 10,000, like I did, it will just emit a single file row of 10,000 particles, starting from the emitter. Using this spacing parameter to space them out, but that's not what we want. We don't want single file. We want a patch of grass with the emitter point in the center of it. So we need to tell the shader how many times we want to divide this row of particles, and this is exactly what this setting does:、uh, instance rows. And the rows will be offset by the same spacing parameter. Okay, so if you set it to 100, you're going to get 100 rows, each with 100 particles, totaling to 10,000. So you'll get a nice square、uh, patch. Uh, you can see what happens when I scroll the instance rows value.、Uh, our square patch is kind of morphing into a rectangle. If I got it all the way down to one, it would be a single row、uh, again. But I want a square, so I'm going to leave it at 100. One important thing to remember is that、uh, instance rows must be an integer. Otherwise, if it's a float, the particles will behave erratically when you move the node around. Finally, terrain amplitude is the height value that you have in your terrain vertex shader. In my case, it's 100, so I've put 100 here to make sure that my foliage matches the shape of the terrain underneath. Okay, so with the basic settings out of the way,、uh, let's take a look at some of the more interesting parameters. Coverage altitude is the、uh, maximum altitude at which your foliage will grow. It's now set to 20, but if I dial it in, you will see that the particles that cover the higher parts of the mountains、uh, begin to disappear.、Um, they're not really disappearing, though. They're just they're still being emitted, only way off screen, so we don't have to render them. Coverage range is the height range within which your grass will grow. If I set it to something much smaller, like 10. And then scroll the altitude up and down. You'll see how the particles are moving up and down the mountain. 
This could be useful when you want to have like different types of vegetation at different heights, which happens in nature. Uh, slope coverage decides on the extent to which the grass will grow on slopes. So if I dial it in, you'll see that the particles are starting to disappear from the areas where the slope is steeper. Uh, clumping strength, uh, this one is interesting, but before we make sense of it, uh, we need to create a clump map. That is a map that will control where the grass grows uh, within your patch. The easiest way to go about this one is to create a noise texture, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll create a fast uh, noise light and I'll give it a type of ping pong. That's what I found works best for this purpose. And I'm going to create a color ramp to give me some more control over the uh, clumping. So now if I play around with the sliders on the color ramp and noise frequency, you'll see that I'm starting to get some pretty cool looking uh, irregularities. So clumping strength is basically the extent to which the clump map uh, affects the particles. It's like if you were increasing the contrast on the clump map, more or less. Now, we can also orient the particles to the terrain normal with this checkbox here. That's what we needed the normal map for, if you remember. Hopefully you can see the effect. It's not perfect because it's using an 8-bit uh, normal map image to build the transform matrix from RGB values of the pixels. If it was a 32-bit normal map, it would probably be more accurate. But still, it's kind of okay. You can also adjust the strength of the influence that the normal map has on the transform matrix. Better yet, if you scroll down, you'll see this terrain normal basis parameter. With this, you can manipulate the uh, transform matrix of the normals and you can achieve some pretty freaky effects with this. Like if you wanted to create a windswept environment, for example, you could lay your grass down with this setting. Okay, moving on. Instance position randomize. This is going to allow us to make this rig look more organic, as in more natural. So you can randomize the position of the particles. We can also randomize their rotation like so. We can randomize the scale of the particles by setting a minimum and maximum scale. This alone will randomize their scale, but we can further amplify the randomization effect with this setting, instance scale randomize. Okay. We can also set the scale of each of the three axes separately, like if you wanted the instances to be taller or thicker or whatever. And finally, spacing, which we discussed in the beginning, controls the scattering of the individual instances. And that, my friends, is it. So using this shader with some really simple grass blades that I made in Blender, I was able to create these environments in Godot, which perform quite well, while arguably looking fairly decently, in my personal opinion. And that is before any optimization work has been done on Godot 4, because remember, this is still early alpha, alpha 10 in this particular case. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Find me on Twitter for more frequent updates. And I guess I'll see you in the next episode. Peace in the world.